in a desperate attempt to transform their lives. Take care and don't be obnoxious. These long-suffering families are entrusting their teenagers to new parents on the other side of the world. Make sure you take care of yourself and look after yourself. Have a nice time. Um, look, don't be too rude to the family. Yeah, it's cool. Right. Have a nice right, time. Enjoy yourself, yeah. Alex. All right. Yeah, Take care and be well behaved. All right, cool. All right. I'm Dina. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Chicago together. Oh, I miss her already. <laughs> I really do. I, I really do miss her. I'm not sure I'll miss him, you know, that much for the week. But I'm just hoping he'll get a good experience from it. The teen's 4,000-mile journey will end here, Chicago, the biggest city of the American Midwest. We teach our children whether adults do something you like or not because they are adults, you respect them with your actions. Dad Dwayne and his wife Vanessa have two daughters, 14-year-old Latrice and 16-year-old Lanessa. When we give a directive, it should be done. We don't count to one, two, three. We don't keep saying, haven't I told you or didn't I tell you? You get one time to do what you're asked to do. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. Dwayne is the pastor at the local church and their Christian beliefs form the backbone of their parenting. We're the kind of parents that offer rules and relationship. Group hug. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute, spinning group hug. Then that's ridiculous. To give kids just strictly rules that motivates them to rebel. If you give them just relationship, that makes them spoiled and they're ruined. After a nine hour flight, the teens touch down in Chicago. It looks like a really like, pleasant build base. Everything's gonna be perfect. We've got some really nice jobs and just expect everything with everyone. Yeah, high expectations. Well, honey, this, this is it. Yep, it's going to be exciting. Looking forward to it. I can remember they do look a bit too happy. <laughs> they seem way too nice. Oh, they seem like they're going to be like really angry people, like nice, and then as soon as you piss them off, that's it. Welcome to our home. We want you to uh, meet our daughters, your sisters for the week. <laughs> I'm Latrice. I'm Vanessa. Hello, Latrice. I'm going to come in and get settled. Girls, you want to take their coats? Dina? Dina, yeah. I'm gonna make sure I say it right, okay. It's gonna be where you go to sleep at. Oh, it's a really nice room. Yeah. Now, Alex, this is gonna be your room in here. All right, looks nice. When I first saw them, like, just standing outside, they just looked so, like, happy, perfect couple. And the fact that they said they'd been married for 25 years was kind of like, oh, okay, then. <laughs> That's quite a long time. Whereas you're just, like, used to being in England, and everyone's constantly getting divorced. I reckon they're gonna be overly strict, get really angry about almost everything I do. The area looks nice, so I'm looking forward to actually being kicked out so I can have a little stroll around. Ultimate authority. Let me show you what the rules are. A whole list. A list. <clears throat> all right, first of all, smoking in and around our house or out with the family is not permitted. We don't allow our family to smoke. We don't allow our relatives when they come over to smoke. Uh, we're a smoke-free zone, all right? No forms of drug and alcohol would be allowed in our home. Uh, profanity, as far as language, is not allowed. Dress, clothing is not allowed in our home or outside that exposes breasts, butts, boxers, or that which is too tightly revealing parts of the body which should be properly displayed. All my clothes are like really fitted though. So okay. That's a really hard one. I'm going to let Vanessa be the one that, when, you know, when it comes to that, she'll probably talk to you about it, if it's to this or to that. But then as far as uh, boxers, having your pants below your butt, I would have to ask you if you could not do that, right. OK? OK. Uh, as far as relating to others, um, no fighting, no slamming doors, uh, no talking back and yelling and screaming and stumping out of the room, walking away in the middle of a conversation. Absolutely no lying with the intent to deceive. It's going to result in immediate punishment as well as stealing. So now at this point, we're going to let you go ahead and get unpacked and get settled. So again, welcome to our home. Yeah. 
While I'm here, I can't imagine me having much freedom at all because he seems to, like, want to control everything and everyone in the house and just won't, like, let anyone do what they want to do. I think the rules are a bit too much to take on. I don't mind boundaries and, like, certain things what to do. When there's, like, a massive list of things I can't do or that shouldn't be done in general, it's just too much. Like his rules, man, that's so stupid. He's telling me how to dress and not to smoke and stuff. Alex, uh, can I come in? Dwayne and Vanessa want to ensure that their teens have brought nothing with them that would invite temptation. I just wanted to make sure that we get off to a good start with uh, you honoring the rules. I don't know if you're a smoker or not. I don't know if you're a drug user or not. I don't know if you drink alcohol. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, go through your stuff just to make sure that none of that stuff is yeah, actually yeah, sure. there. Feel free to. I'm going to have to check through your things to make sure you don't have anything that violates our rules. Not cool, right? right? OK. OK. What's, what's with the lighter? What do you use lighter for? Um, lighting. Truthfully. <laughs> Light, lighting a fag or something. Oh, really? Did you bring any with you? Uh, what, fags? Yeah. No. So you didn't bring any cigarettes with you, right? No. And you're telling me the truth. Why would it matter? Uh, because we established the boundaries that uh, you're supposed to tell the truth and not lie with the intent oh. to deceive and well, you're yeah, not supposed yeah, to I have did, cigarettes. Did. Yeah, I did. Okay. But... You give me the cigarettes and whenever you want one, I will say, okay, here you go, you can have it. Yeah. That's cool. How about that? That's cool? Okay, let me have them. Right, well, I've actually hid them on me, so I just have to get them. Oh, okay. Well, well go ahead. I'll, I'll, uh... <laughs> oh, so you have to roll them. Yeah. You have to roll Where's the papers? Okay, Alex, I first of all want to say thank you so much for being honest. Uh, you just bumped up some points. <laughs> uh, the second thing, though, is your pants. You yeah. need to pull your pants up on you and tighten your belt. When you pull them up, you still got them <laughs> down. <laughs> so what do you think so far? I look like a bit of a twat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, and by the way, as far as uh, the, uh, the, the the cigarettes and stuff are concerned, tread lightly with the rules because this will be your punishment. Yes. Well, thanks, man. Could keep Thank me in order now. <laughs> you say what? <laughs> keep me in order now. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Lord, thank you once again for another meal we're about to receive. May it be used for the nourishment of our bodies. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Davises eat together every day. They believe that talking at mealtimes enables parents and teens to maintain a close relationship. When was the last time that you sat down with your family like this and ate a dinner? It was a very long time ago. Like... It's been that long? Mm. But it's like they want me to stay down there, but if the food's ready, I'll just go take it and go upstairs. Like... We don't really discuss it or anything. And why do you do that? If we have a conversation more than 10 minutes, it ends into, into an argument. So. Now, it's we. You, your mom. And my stepdad. Your stepdad. Yeah. So it just always turns a corner and... Yeah. Wow. So you just don't bother. Yeah. You might change your mind by the end of the Yeah, week, I probably you know? will. Like, give it a month or so. I don't know. In America, the fashion for low-slung trousers is based in gang and prison culture. Alex's sense of style is clearly in breach of the Davis's rules. Alex, got something I need to share with you, and uh, I don't know how you're going to take this. We specifically spelled out exposing breasts, butts, or boxers. And I think I've mentioned it to you probably two or three times. Yeah. Uh, understanding that you pulled them up, they were up, but every time I see you, they're down. I'm just not happy with you telling me how to dress. Really? Yeah, I think I should be able to dress how I like, not how you would like me to. OK, well, that's fine. Uh, I got one question. Are you going to do what I ask you to do, or are you not going to do it? I'm not going to do it. OK, well, then the punishment is this. You won't be able to smoke any more cigarettes until I see that you're able to pull your pants up. I don't think that should be your choice either. Well, the decision has been made. I just don't see why it should concern you. Well, it concerns me because I don't want to see your butt around my house. That's the bottom line. You will not get them back until I could see at least a day of you adhering to my standard. Yeah, whatever then. 
Yeah, whatever, then what does that mean? You're going to do it or you're not going to do it? Oh, no, I'll decide later. You'll decide later? Oh, okay, well, you just decide you'll smoke later. <laughs> That's the way it works. I just think I'm old enough to make my own choices. Certain choices are not yours to make when you're living and dependent upon somebody else. What do I think about it, then? All right. Well, can we shake on you going to think about it? Yeah, OK. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right. What's in the back? OK. He is selfish. He wants to write his own ticket and do his own thing. He doesn't want any rules or anybody telling him what to do. He's very arrogant. And we don't have that kind of behavior in our home. What was that showing about? Fucking, he's trying to tell me what I can wear and what I can. It's just fucking stupid, like. We could just, like, just hear you shouting from downstairs and I was trying to listen, but... No, I wasn't really shouting. It's just kind of pissed me off. I was trying to tell me what to do already, like... I might just stroll around stuff. naked and piss me off. <laughs> Is that where you hid all your back? <laughs> Can't believe you did that. It's gonna get all dry and Wait, horrible. So had... Hey. Hi. What you got there? <laughs> um, rolled up. Rolling up what? I stole, I stole a tiny bit of backy from earlier. Hmm, really? Hmm. Got any more in there? In here? Nah. Let me check. You actually serious? I'm dead serious. When we said and talked about the rules, those were the rules. All right. Now, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat now, I'm pretty disappointed. I'm, I'm very disappointed. Is this what your mom goes through? No. Nah. No? She's obviously not going to take my back in and try and flush it down the toilet. You probably wouldn't let her. Well, no, obviously not. You lied to me. You didn't feel bad about that? No. Why not? I don't know. So, Just... you think, so you think lying is good? As long as you don't get caught? Well, yeah. What kind of value system is that? You call yourself grown at 16. When you have to stoop to lying, you reduce yourself to a child. So now you got two days without a cigarette. Get out, get out. Whatever then. You know, one of these days I would like for you to translate to me what do you mean by, by whatever. When trust goes out the window, your respect level in my eyes goes down with it. And so for him to lie to me like that, straight to my face, okay, that hurt. And uh, he's got to do a lot now. Uh, to regain that trust. All right. Yeah, what's happened now? Flushed a heap of my fucking backy. So do you think you're going to start putting up your trousers now or not? I don't know. Like, I don't actually, like, care. It's just, like, I don't like him getting his own way because he, like, seems to think that he can get whatever he wants. He's, like, being a fucking prick. Fair enough. Hey, what Get up. Morning. It's about that time for us to start getting up and getting ready. I know I just got to try and go along with this and do what they want so then I can be able to smoke again. <laughs> Alex, here's your chores. The bathroom upstairs, that's going to be your responsibility. Then your chores for today is going to be you're going to sweep the entire tile floor. Then you're going to mop the kitchen area. Let's Just think of it this way. Many hands makes the load lighter. So let's say that together. Many, Many hands, hands makes, makes the, the load, load lighter. lighter. Mr. and Mrs. Davis believe that to run an orderly home, everyone must contribute. They want Dina and Alex to learn a lesson in being active members of the family. This is fucking vile. If mom asked me to clean the toilet, I'd probably just tell it to fuck off. This is like what the cleaner does. I mean, too much fun for words. What's up with your pants, man? Ah! There you go. That was a bit painful there. <laughs>
For Mr. Davis, once the rule is set, it has to be enforced. You need to get that skirt changed right away so we can get moving. Can't I just stay in... There you go. There you go. It's longer now. Dana, what did I just say? Yeah, but I've already done So let's go do else. it, Dana. Let's, let's, let's go do it. Go, yeah, but go I've change. already done everything else. No. Any hint of disobedience always results in immediate action. You don't change, and for the rest of the day until this time tomorrow, you don't eat. No, I'm gonna still gonna eat. How are you gonna eat? We're not gonna let you eat. You brought some food with you? No, but you can't make me starve. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You wanna try me? I can, get a, I can give an edict in this house right now that Dina will not eat until tomorrow. Well, that's just a bit stupid. Okay, well, it's stupid that you don't do what I tell you to do. Yeah, but it's only clothes. Who cares? Okay, oh, it's only food. Who cares? No, but that's different. No, it's not. Yeah, because food... You want to eat. You want something from me, right? Yeah. Right? And I want something from you. Yeah, but I've already done stuff for you. I've already, like, You haven't done what I'm just telling you now, is to change that skirt and let's go. That was the past. This is the present. We're moving toward the future. You've done that. That's over with. Now I'm asking you to change that skirt and let's get going. For God's sake, OK? So you can eat the rest of the day and okay, tomorrow morning. OK, I will change. OK, and you know what? Uh, I'll give you five minutes. It shouldn't take that long. OK, I'm going to change. OK, we'll be waiting. Uh, excuse me, Dina. Yes. What did you just do? I closed the door. No, you didn't close it. What did you just do? I just closed it. You just didn't close it. Closing it is like this. What did you do? I closed it a bit harder. And that's called what? Slamming doors. And isn't that one of our rules? Yeah. OK, let's go. Alex. 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 <laughs> Hey, man, we're about to uh, make another move. So if you can get back up and straighten things up here and we'll get moving, OK? Why is there a sock here? Mr. Davis has secured Alex and Dina positions at the local grocery store. Hey guys. He knows from experience that holding down a job helps teenagers become independent adults. Uh, Right now, we are about to go to a place that has hired you guys. I'll go there and introduce you, you know, Can to I the individuals. You got a question? Smoke at work, do you think? Maybe. No, absolutely no smoking. Crisco's has been run by the same family for three generations. The store prides itself on its reputation for good service and family values. Excuse me, Rob. How you doing? Hi, boy. Nice to see you. Rob Prisco is the manager. Alex, Rob Prisco, nice to meet you. And this is Dina. Dina, nice to meet you. I understand you want to do groceries for a couple of days, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get you something to wear and we'll see how it goes. I think they're going to do well. I think we've done enough reinforcement to them and put enough fear of God in them that they're going to at least try to be respectful. <laughs> I'm supposed to be like facing everything to the front and pulling it to the front and I was doing that I was just looking at the drinks. Stacking shelves is a typical first job for many American teens. Sorry I'm getting really confused with all this now. Working alongside Dina is 20 year old Kyle. He's been working since he was 16 to help pay for his education. Do you have a job on top of going to school? I have like a part-time job, so part -time like, but that's job. like a job like I do it when I want to. If I don't, I go off to my mom and I ask her. That stopped working for me when I was about eight or ten years old. No, yeah, it, still, <laughs> it still works for me. It's called charming them. Or I go to my grandparents. It's not just Dina's attitude to work that's completely foreign. If I can't get the money, then I take it off my mom. I can never steal from my mother. I don't see it as stealing because I live with my mom. I don't know. She knows me, so. Yeah, she, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not taking anything that's not mine. <laughs> I don't want to have this conversation anymore. Change the subject. Well, in a recession like this, I think it's bad that uh, someone be, would be that selfish to steal from someone they love when they're going through hard times and they're busting themselves to make a living just to support them. That's not good. Alex, your trousers are down. So far, the teen's time in Chicago isn't having the desired effect. Well, my plan at the moment is um, 
to kind of like earn his trust again, be really nice. And then as soon as he gives me the back, he refused to give it back. This is cold, this is freezing. I don't cycle because I do some driving me everywhere. I never apologise to anyone. I don't like to apologise. If I like say sorry, then people are just going to think I'm like giving in and more vulnerable. And I don't want anyone to think that. But the Davises still have time to impose their character. The Wayne's Church is located in Chicago's west side, a predominantly African-American area of the inner city. The church's mission is to provide moral guidance for its teenage members. Today, the British teens have been invited to a weekly discussion group by youth leaders Collis and Kevin. All right, first of all, tell, tell your, your new best friends what, what your names are. I'm Dina. Dina. Alex. Dana and Alex. Okay, so what are your thoughts in terms of respect? Are you respecting your parents? You know, the, the whole thing like that. The floor is yours. I fight my mum. I shout my mum. I don't like to listen to my mum. So how is that going to help you in I'm, the I'm listening to her, but I don't want to know it now. I only want to do it so I can stay happy. So your happiness is based on you being selfish and disrespectful and arrogant? No, because I didn't asked to be like my mom's child, so she has to put up with anything I give her because she put me into this world. Okay. So really anything I do, she has to accept it. Okay, what do you guys think of that? I feel like if you want to be an adult, then you should be treated like an adult and start doing your own things to fend for yourself. When you live in a house with your mama, your mama owns you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you disrespect your mama, I think it's time for you to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. No comment. Okay. <laughs> Alex, do you have a comment? I don't, like, get along with my mum very well, so, like, I don't chat to her much, and, like, I don't know, I, like, try to avoid her. To avoid the disrespect, you just keep your space. Yeah. Alex, throughout life, you're going to encounter people that you don't like, that you don't agree with, and if your only resort is running away from the issues, you're going to be running for the rest of your life. So you're going to have to face it you may not like or necessarily agree, Alex, with what they're saying. You're just gonna have to suck it up, man. I think they've taught the kids here to have to put up with everything that their parents throw at them. But they were told to suck it up and just do whatever your parents say. I couldn't do that at all. It's just like, well, we're the kids. We can't really help what we do. We're just learning when we're growing up. And so they should just deal with the problems because they should expect that when you have a child, you're going to get issues with that child. She made a statement in the class that, hey, I need to live out all of my rebelliousness. I need to live out my disrespect because I'm a child. I don't know what planet she's from, but that's just not how you operate in a structured society. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to sleep well last night and for waking us up for another day. At home in Bristol, Alex avoids spending time with his own family. Amen. In the God-fearing Davis household, he has no option but to join in. Your eggs are done and uh, pancakes, and so we'll sit down and eat. And... That's one thing after breakfast, you know, like, have you thought about whether I can smoke or not, or, like, you know, what's going on there? I'd have to say no. Not today. What, not at all today? Not at all today. But I put loads of effort in, did I? Yeah, you did. But that was what we established the other day, when you broke the rule, when you lied to me, when what you had extra had one, time. Uh, just... No, no means none. As we say, you can choose the sin, but you have no control over the consequences. And this is just one of the consequences of your violation. Okay. All right. Dwayne's uncompromising attitude to parenting stems from his own tough upbringing. What has shaped my parenting goes all the way back to when I was a kid. In the neighborhood that I grew up, there was uh, lots of crime, delinquency, lots of drugs. It was an impoverished area simply because, you know, blacks at the time, you know, didn't have, you know, really nice jobs to support their families. And being one of the children of a single mom, I grew up on welfare. So raising children of my own, I want to give them what I never had. We 
you like me to take it to your car? Halfway through their time in Chicago, the teens are getting used to the daily grind. We got paid $89.13. At the end of their shift, Alex experiences a whole new sensation, his first ever paycheck. I might keep this, you know, and email it to my mum and be like, yeah, no, can I, just I earned you, money. You should frame it because you've never worked a day in your life. To give them a sense of how privileged they are back home, Dwayne has decided to take the teens to the area he grew up in. West Garfield Park is one of the poorest areas in Chicago. We have made it to my old stomping grounds, as we call it, the neighborhood where I grew up as a teenager. In the 1970s, it was a tough but functioning working class neighborhood. Today, nearly half of its residents are long-term unemployed. Well, look who's here. What's up, man? Hey, man. That's Boo, right? How y'all doing? Yeah. I know it's kind of surprising seeing me back yeah. here, huh? Yeah, but you, you used to live right here about 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. that uh, about 30, about, about 30, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yep, 48 mm -hmm. years ago. Right. 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 You too, you man. Good, Take man. care. Right. We're coming up to my old house. We stayed on the second level. It was me, my mom, and my other six siblings. Oh, my God, six. Six. six in a three-bedroom home right here used to be my best friend's home and we did all kinds of things i took my first puff of a cigarette i was 12 years old that's when i started smoking and then at 13 my friend introduced me to alcohol and we started drinking and partying and just having fun at 13. what were you like when you were 16 then by the time i was 16 i was hooked on marijuana I was smoking a pack and a half a day. I was drinking alcohol, um, having lots of sex with different individuals, being very rebellious against my mother's rules. I was just having fun, and I didn't care about anybody but me. Like you just met one of your old friends. Mm -hmm. Is that nice to come back to it? You know, actually, Alex, no. no. Because that guy I remember as being young, handsome, smart, sharp. Years later, I come and just to see somebody that I once played with who, who's made decisions in life that got him looking like that, being like that. It's like he's gone nowhere. And I've, there's a lot of my friends that are like that. And uh, I'm grateful that I made some of the right decisions to put me where I am, you know, that I can be an example to you guys because I made the right choices. And uh, a lot of my friends have either died from drugs, uh, been shot and maimed uh, in, in jail, and um, all the people, I mean, I, I got vivid memories of running, <sighs> just running around with these people, and it, it hurts. I'm gonna take you down here and let you uh, see some other things here. Today, it seems like I've seen the other side to drugs, like what it's like does to people in the long term rather than the short term. Dwayne's old friend, especially like when we walk past him, Seeing that's kind of like upsetting. I felt really bad for him because I know if I came back to it and I saw my friend like that, that would be probably the worst thing. What's going to make you so different in 30 years time? Honestly, don't know. Growing up, Dwayne hardly knew his father. Today, he does all he can to be a constant presence in his daughter's lives. Every so often, I'd grab Lanessa or Latrice individually. I'd take them out on a daddy-daughter date. So I wanted to kind of get away with you this evening. I think you'll enjoy it. Tonight is the weekly choir practice. Praise the Lord with me. Dina's dad left when she was two. Oh, I'm going out, okay? No, where are you going? Party. 
I grew up without having a dad. I was always just raised by my mum, and I never saw anything differently. Like, it never bothered me that I didn't have a dad. I didn't really care too much. Me and her father split up just after she was born, and when she was 10, he died. So she's never actually had uh, that kind of interaction. Dina, I've said no and I mean no. I always wonder what it would still be like to have a dad and whether that I would be any different. But I've always been, just had my mum, and so I can kind of control my mum a little bit because there's only one person to focus on. I wrote a song for my daughter. It's called Daddy's Little Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't remember. Uh, wonder what it's like to have a dad and then when it's put in front of me I'm kind of like yeah that is quite nice I kind of feel like I'm missing out on something something important mm -hmm. the greatest person in the world to any little girl is their daddy daddy is the first Prince Charming and dad is there to pour love into her heart if it's not there then it creates a big hole in her heart yeah if you don't have that love that you get from your dad then you do try and fill it with anything and I've tried that so many, like, when I go out and I will go out and buy loads of stuff, I don't do it just because I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. I, do it I do it because it blocks out. It blocks out me thinking about something I'm missing out on, and I never know, I never realised what I was missing out on. Yeah, I'm drinking hot, though. Shut up. Shut up. Living with the Davises, Alex is enjoying being involved with family life. You're going to do the <laughs> middle door as well. Dwayne's put some effort into making a good relationship with me. And because I've recognised how nice he's been to me, I find it hard to say no. Like, if he's like, oh, can you help out a little bit since you've been living here? But like, yeah, sure. Back home, Alex's difficult relationship with his mum causes multiple arguments. She's made contact with him, hoping that things can improve. Dear Alex, I hope this letter finds you well and you are enjoying your time in America. I love you with all of my heart, but as I have said, I don't always like you. Your attitude to me and sometimes Mike leaves us feeling used and getting nothing back. You cannot even say hello or goodbye when you enter or leave our house. Well, the fuck, she's trying to blame me for everything. You have become very self-centered. Oh, really? only doing what you want to do. I feel that I am losing you and I really want my son back. The son who was happy, fun, loving and caring. I will always love you and hope that you will be able to love me back and show me some respect. Lots of love, Mum. Like, that's a shit. So you got a chance to hear from Mum, huh? Yeah. Yeah, what uh, what'd you think? I was expecting a nice letter saying, oh, I miss you and everything. It turned out to be a letter blaming me for everything. Are you for real? Mm. Wow. How does that make you feel? It's just like made me completely change my mind. I don't even want to be friends with her right now. This letter's just kind of like ruined my experience. Really? Let me, let me ask you this. Uh, you're hurt, right? You were hurt when you came here. She is hurt. So that's what you're feeling through her letter, not a dislike of you, but the hurt that has come through the relationship on both sides. Yeah. So within her words, it's sprinkled a lot of her deepest heart, and you can give her another chance by understanding, Alex, it's not all you. It's mom as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. We can pick this back up later if you want to, you know, and I know that's just gonna ruin the rest of your evening. Yeah. In the Davis house, playing by the rules means you get treated like an adult. We're going to leave you guys here to be responsible, to 
do what you need to do by way of hanging together and I'm glad you can trust us to leave yes. us alone then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Exactly. And that's that's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. We want you guys to feel like, you know, you're part of the family now. We can leave and you guys will be responsible with your behavior. Okay. I'm getting my purse. Yeah, okay. Alex and Dina, as an addition to our family, has gained some credibility in our eyes where we feel that we can step away for a few hours, allow them to let their hair down and be comfortable without having our adult parenting hovering over them. So we're going to give them an opportunity to be trusted while we're away. Mm -hmm. It's a good test because the other kids will tell on them. (laughs) In Bristol, Alex deals with his family problems by simply doing his own thing. Alex, what do you do in your life? If it was a Friday, I'd drink in the morning. With no parents to keep an eye on him, he reverts to his bad old ways. Anyway, I'm going to go outside, so... Why are you going outside? Because I managed to scab that fag off that guy. I'm, like, begging you, don't. If he finds out, you're going to get in trouble. Great. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to go downstairs to see this one. I do, too. <laughs> Where are you going to put that cigarette out? Oh, I'll walk over there. Mm. Bye. Have a nice night out there. Yeah, Bye. you too. Bye. Well, I just just think it's kind of stupid that he went out. Because my dad probably, I know him, he probably would have gave him one when he came back and be like, oh, I could trust you while we're gone. But he decided to just take his last one, I guess. And be stupid. I'm happy now, so I'm not worried. Like, I'm not sure if I should be smoking here because I'm not sure if that's disrespectful to him or not. So I'm going to walk over there. But... Yeah. You can either tell Dwayne yourself when he gets home, we'll let you in, or we'll let you in and, and we'll yeah, tell him. And they'll tell him. Why do you want to tell him so much? Because oh. he's going to find out anyway, so would you rather right, he just gonna found find out. out? When I get in trouble, he'll be like, well, why didn't you just tell me? It's the fact that you lied. That's what he gets mad about. It's your life. Yeah, so it is my life. People shouldn't get involved. Because that always makes a person feel better. We'll come back in. We're home. Hey! Just to say before you do say anything. What? Huh? I no, did, say I did... hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hey. Just jump right into hi. it, huh? Hi. Who's 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 eating again? Me. I just mm. figured I'd tell you because you prefer honesty. I did have the chance to smoke and I did take it. So I just wanted to know what you you thought about that, you know? You say you had a chance to smoke? Yeah, and I took it. Where'd you get the cigarettes from? Um, just outside of the job place. There was a guy walking by and I asked if I could have one. You better be lying. I'm not lying, seriously. I'm being honest with you. Where are the rest of the cigarettes? He gave me one. And so you just walked out the house and you went to smoke a cigarette. Mm. Just totally in defiance of what uh, was established. I, I don't think you can tell me not to smoke and I'll just do it. I'm not going to do everything you say. You've got to realise that. OK. I'm happy to abide by most of your rules, just not that one. OK, fine. Come here. Let's go for a little walk. Come on. Since you want to abide by my rules, you stay out there until you decide you're going to abide by them. I'll give you a few hours to think about it. Go smoke, do whatever you want to do on your own time and on your own terms. I hope the temperature drops about another 20 degrees. Alex thinks that this is just about smoking, but it's more than that. He went against one of the rules, and we established that, and we were growing in the trust, and he decided to violate that, so that makes me angry. Nah, fuck him, man. He's just too pathetic. Fucking hell, it's cold. Alex's defiance is defeated by the freezing temperatures. He returns to the house looking for an instant reconciliation. You traded everything for that little one moment. You've got to think about things like that because that little one decision can have serious consequences. And that's what lessons like this are intended to uh, teach you. You can choose the decision, but you have no choice over the consequences. Come on in. Have a good night. I'll yeah. see you early in the morning. Yes, in the morning. All right. With his own family, Alex's constant rule breaking has turned him into an outsider. I've kind of gotten used to 
not being a part of my family, not sharing things with them and not being like friends with my family. It's been like this for about three years. Like, we've never really got on since then, really. Well, I think he just feels that we're so horrible and we're such awful parents mm. that he doesn't want to live with us, really, doesn't yeah. he? It does kind of make me feel a bit lonely, but then, like, how I see it is I've got my friends there for me, so I'm not really worried. I don't really feel I need a family looking out for me or anything. Hi, Jane. My name is Vanessa Davis. Oh, hi, Vanessa. Thank you for ringing. It's really kind of you. The Davises believe that understanding Alex's relationship with his mum could be the key to helping him. I'm trying very hard to guide him in the right route, but sometimes I'm not being very successful because it makes me angry and cross. Mm -hmm. I love him dearly, I really do. And I keep questioning myself of where I've gone wrong, really. I think that's how I feel at the moment. Well, what about the relationship part? I mean, do you guys um, just talk about things that, are, that, are, that don't involve issues? I are think you guys... we used to. Um, but as uh, Alex has got older, he's not wanting to do the family things with us. But it's actually okay. getting him to do that type of thing because he actually isn't interested in us at the moment. He's more interested in his friends and his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. And I think possibly we have ground our relationship down so that... The only contact I have with Alex is around perhaps issues that we're having. I'm going to uh, speak with Alex about last night. The Davises know that if things are to improve at home, Alex needs to understand the cost of his rebellious attitude. So, so far, what are some of the things you learned about consequences? Obviously, like you said, I couldn't smoke and I did. Uh -huh. So now I just can't smoke anymore. So from a consequence standpoint, do you see that if you don't manage yourself, how it affects everything and everyone around you? Yeah. I want you to also think about, you know, the things that you're learning uh, through me here, through being in our home, see in what way you can transfer that information into your own relationship with your mom at home so that at least from your end, you can make things better. Because relationships is a, it's a two-way street. It's her responsibility and your responsibility to make it work. And you can't control her, but you can control you. You, you, you follow that? Yeah. What do you feel in my home that you don't feel in your home? Well, I, I, I just feel welcome. If I come to my house, I just get like, I don't know, they look at me weirdly, they argue with me, I just don't feel like I'm wanted there at all. But yeah. when I come here, we get along quite well, so I feel quite welcome and like, you know. Yeah. Is it important for you to feel wanted at home, yeah. honestly? I don't know. I, I, I just stop caring about these kind not, of things. Like. Not your stop caring mind. I mean, your desired mind, what you really desire. I mean, you're at the point where it's like, you know what? I hear what you're saying, Mr. Davis. I don't care. I don't want that no more. But deep down inside, if you could have it, what would you like? I'd like a better relationship with my mom. What would that look like? Maybe we could just like try being friends or something like that. OK, you, you want to be friends with her? Yeah. Go back to some happier times. Mm. Yeah. Well, I hope and pray, man, that that is exactly what you get, but that you would get more, that you would actually be able to at least accommodate her on several things and then explain to her where your heart really is without having to take it to drama land. Let's, let's make it back to the house here, because... The Davis's tough love approach to family relationships has forced Alex to confront his attitude to his own parents. It's helped me, like, kind of understand a bit more about why my mum is how she is and, like, maybe I am the one in the wrong here. I reckon I'm going to try and, like, make the first step towards, like, me and my mum's relationship get it better. I'll try and be more grown up about it and maybe, like, see what happens if I don't retaliate to the argument. Maybe I should be a bit more sympathetic towards her. After being away from home for nearly a week, Dina receives a letter from her mum. Dear Dee Dee, I miss you very much, and the fact that I have absolutely no contact with you is very hard. You know how much I love you, and if you doubt it anyway, I mean, I really love you. As you get older, you have to learn that life is not about taking and taking, it is about learning to give and receive. 
and I know you're growing up, but please slow down. Life is a blessing and you shouldn't wish it away too quickly. You're just 16, a beautiful young woman, but you have your whole life ahead of you. Enjoy being young for now. The beauty of my life was finding a treasure like you. I sincerely want that back. I love you very much, Mum. I'm feeling really sad right now. Because I think I never like realised how much I actually like love her properly and I never really see it. But like not having her here like now has made me see that I really do miss her. And that I do need her. I think as soon as I see her, I just wanna tell her that I love her and I'm sorry for everything I've done. And I just wanna like be a better person to her and show her like each day that I really do love her. Alex and Dina's time with the Davis family has come to an end. Dwayne. Dina wants to show Dwayne that she's learned some genuine lessons. Hey, what's up? Um, I just wanted to come and say to you, sorry about the other day when I slammed the door in your face. And sorry that it's taken this long for me to apologize. Thank you so much for that, and I accept it 100%. Come on, let's, let's go. Jesus, Jesus, won't you come back to us? Before you guys go, I got a little surprise for you. I just want to induct you all into the Davises Hall of Fame of Family. <laughs> Son, you take care, man. Okay. Yeah, I love you. Always will. Okay. Daughter, Dana, gonna miss you. Dwayne and Vanessa's family meant a hell of a lot to me, and I felt like I felt like I had a fresh start. I've learned that I need to stop being selfish. I need to realise that I can't just have everything for myself. Dwayne taught me a lot about that. Like I can't just have it all. Really missed her. Um, having no contact's been the hardest part. It's never happened before. I know that my behaviour is getting really bad. Like, I just didn't want to listen to you. Did what I want, said what I want. I think I need to say sorry to you for, like, everything. Everything that I do, I'm sorry for, like, all of my bad behaviour, all of my mouthing off to you, like, my temper, I'm sorry for that. And I think I'm just sorry, mostly, that I don't tell you anything anymore. I'm a little bit apprehensive about seeing him. However, I'm looking forward to seeing him because um, I just love him to pieces. Hello. Yeah, you have a nice time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Come on. Have you made me a cup? Pardon? Yeah, sure. I'm So you thought it was a good experience? Yeah, it was really nice. You enjoyed it? Mm. Good. Well, we've I missed you leave. here. Oh, we've missed you here. I actually got a job while I was there. Let's have a look. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, so and I got loads of dollars. And you actually earned that money? Yeah, yeah. How fantastic is that, Alex? I never thought having a good family was important at all. But seeing how their family was, it made me really miss it. And that's what made me think I, I want to make another chance. I think that you've just shown how really nice and how grown up you can be. You make me very proud, Alexander. Thank you. <laughs>